An intelligent human being would have done this before she put the downpipe on the car. Hi, people of the world. Welcome to the internet. If you clicked on this video by accident or mildly regretting your life choices right now, up above is a link to the last video where I worked on this car and it'll get you mildly caught up. Currently I'm in the process of doing probably the most difficult part of this wiring and that is hacking apart the fuse box back here and converting my circuit opening relay into the new fuel pump relay. So this is the fuse box that's back here in the engine bay on the MR2 and I actually took the back side off of it to remove this beer can, relay, beer can, and replace it with this 50 amp breaker. Reason being, this new relay and fuse bank is what is going to provide power for the ECU as well as the boost control solenoid. And of course I want to locate all the stuff in the factory fuse box because I want it to be clean. Tape. I'm going to do my best to explain what I'm doing right now. I'm not the greatest with words at times. This loom right here is coming from the body harness going to the ECU to EA1. I need to find which one of these blue and black wires goes to the fuel pump because that wire is going to connect to this new relay. Back behind this carpet and foam, the plug right here from the body harness, that plugs into this guy and this guy goes up this path and out to my fuel pump. There's my wire to my fuel pump. Got it. So luckily the circuit opening relay existing wire had a wire that went to the fuel pump resistor, the factory fuel pump resistor and relay. What I'm gonna do is pair that wire to the wire that's going out to the actual plug to the fuel pump. And once those two are soldered together, the plug on the backside of this new fuel pump relay, which is the former circuit opening relay, will then have the correct terminal and the correct spot for this whole setup to work. Fuel, fuel pump, fuel pimp really. Fuel pimp really. I got lucky and I had an open port on EA1 on the body harness side for the old circuit opening relay and the other side of it wasn't utilized yet. So I'm going to pin the ECU auxiliary output on the other side of it and now it's all connected. Terminal 2. Fuel pump really. I got heat shrink it but you get the point. This right here is the power wire and the ground wire for all the cooling fans back here in the engine bay. It looks like a snake eating a worm or something. Legends of the Hidden Wire. Somebody got that reference and was not impressed. So I route that down through here and then it's gotta follow the ground wire. Last thing I gotta do under this fuse box is connect this brown wire to this pink wire. This pink wire is the trigger for the relay that is powering the ECU. Solder, solder. Never a good sign when I'm soldering and it smells like burnt hair. Melt, there you go. If you weren't getting confused yet because I'm going all over the place with this wiring, you're definitely about to now. I have to braid some wires. See? Braid. Making them pretty. Because I gotta do a twisted pair for the O2 sensor. been here almost seven hours working on wiring stuff just on the fuse box that's it that's my life right now I can now say this is the finished product as long as it doesn't let all the smoke out when I connect the battery fuse up here cooling fans 
Relay right there now controls fuel pump. This guy right here controls the ECU as well as the cam blah 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 blah. This right here is everything I have left to do before this car is technically drivable. So I just gotta start crossing some more stuff off of here. Well, and I'm gonna do a big one. Technically the wiring is done. I just gotta add power and grounds to some stuff and that's not wiring. Okay, it's not, I'm not wiring anymore. I'm over it. Ground wire, where did you go, ground wire? There you are. This is going to be a massive ground. All these ground wires coming together. Turn me now. Turn me now. This is gonna be a hard one to crimp. That's a big wire. Pick the spot right here on top of the transmission that has the ground for the starter, the main engine ground, and it's gonna be the ground for all these wires that go out to all the sensors and to the ECU, as well as it also grounds out to the chassis over here. Some of you might have picked up on the fact that I have some cheap connectors on some of these wires, and that's because I have to loom all this stuff still. So I was just using cheap connectors for now before I go and put the good Deutsch connectors on there. I, I ordered a huge kit of these things. Come off your thing. Oh, I almost forgot the rubber butt plug. Of course I'm gonna label them. How rude do you think I am? Okay, there you go. This right here is the last ground wire for the injectors. There we go. I realize you're supposed to peel this off before you use the board. I'm an idiot, you're welcome. Manana. Best shop decoration ever. Now whenever I go to make any decisions that are automotive, I can just consult Car Dad and he will lead me in the right direction. This has given me a good feeling knowing that I got most of the electrical work done, but I still have one main thing to do. But I want to liven the mood a bit by doing something visually appealing instead. The barbecue guys were nice enough to cut this aluminum heat shield out on their giant laser jet. Is your is your hair good for today? Yeah. It's fine. Ah. It's a little heavier. Is that not what you wanted? It'll be alright. It'll probably work out alright for what we're doing. So that just the cage is exposed and I have to mask off the whole outside so that the overspray doesn't get on the car. Inside this box of goodies, DEI came through for me and sent some products to help with heat soak in this engine bay because these things are notorious for it, especially in Arizona. So I got some lime. Ooh, they sent some loom. Ha ha ha. Turbo blanket in black. That's gonna look really good, especially when that is covered with the heat shield. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna suck pretty hard. Even though I got a lot of experience of safety wiring, this is gonna suck. I have to shove my arms up inside this cavity so I can safety wire those little button points on the heat shield. And that's not gonna be fun. I should probably take the downpipe off since I'm gonna wrap this too. What would you do? Jeez, that thing's huge. What she said. The lovely engineers of this downpipe, although it is a good one, it's not a cheap one, uh, engineered it in a way such that to remove it, you would have to pull the AC compressor. It smacks the top corner of the AC compressor right there, so you can't get the downpipe out. Or undo one of the exhaust studs on the turbo, which are not coming out. This stud, to be exact, if you remove that, I could get this downpipe off. This is gonna royally suck. An intelligent human being would have done this before 
she put the downpipe on the car when the AC system wasn't charged. That's what an intelligent human being would have did. They said to periodically do a ratchet motion with your hands. I'm doing a ratchet motion with my life right now. I have no blood left in my hands. That's the absolute worst feeling in the world. Oh, I itch so bad right now. This is horrible. Everything itches. My face itches. My tongue itches. My nose itches. My eyes itch. Ugh. I itch in places right now I didn't even know it was possible to itch. My f***ing teeth itch. Tell me how that's possible. Now I gotta drop some safety wire down to the underside so I can wire this thing up. How the f*** did I just pull that off? Throwing some Dash 60 vibes right now. I just made somebody laugh with that. <sighs> I definitely think this will get the job done. You can see the AC compressor is right there and that's where I wrapped it. And the AC lines are right here. Those are wrapped as well. You can see it also keeps the heat off of this rubber hose right here for the oil return. I kind of think I should wrap just this section of pipe too because there's a lot of heat right here on this rubber boot and that's why it dry rotted and tore. I really hope the top side of the safety wire job looks okay. I couldn't see what I was doing. Oop, yeah, that looks good. I didn't twist the safety wire just because I, for some reason I was thinking that was gonna make it harsher on the blanket and it could potentially start wearing on it. So I left it as is, a little soft. I don't know, but yep. I think that'll hopefully make a big difference. I wonder if I can find a custom made blanket to go on the bell mouth right there, fit around that giant O2 bung. One last thing to solve. What do I do with the heat shield? Oh, it's right in front of me. Okay, I'm dumb. I just gotta drill the holes out. Focus. So that way the hardware, I'm gonna get new hardware. This looks like poop. Why did I put old gloves on? Oh, this is full of insulation fibers. Now my hands itch. Done. That looks good. Looks really good. This is, this is so pretty. Definitely you want to put some anti-seize on. Oh yeah, that's gonna look so good. Hell yeah. Some of you may remember this right here. This goes onto the throttle body and then it would bolt to the top of the valve cover. That won't work anymore because of coil packs. This is the new solution. One slight dilemma. There is no provision to mount a throttle cable. Oh, this looks good. I'm also gonna need a gasket. I do believe, oh no, I shouldn't need a, yeah I will. So here's the issue. That looks so good. Uh, this bracket right here for the throttle cable used to mount to the side. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. It's not possible. I don't think that'll be too difficult. Just something like that. Even if I did a bracket that attaches to this, that'd look really crappy. I'm not gonna do that. Going with the black powder coating on the intercooler piping, I'm thinking this is gonna pay off. Even though it's a million degrees outside, it's beautiful. Can't tell me it's not pretty here. I just can't wait till it starts raining. The drought here is so bad. Last year, I think we had less than one inch of rain throughout the whole calendar year. And this year, I wouldn't be surprised if we haven't had an inch yet either. I have a massive mess I need to clean up. So I'm gonna end this video off here. And the next video on the MR2, I'm just buttoning up the last of these little few things before I load a base map on this and see if I don't let the smoke out. So I guess you can kind of sort of say the wiring is done-ish. It's still got to be loomed, but I got to start it first. And there's only like two wires I got to add. I'm not going to bother filming that for you guys. You're probably sick of seeing it. So I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.